In 1955, Marguerite Burt went to Ethiopia to teach girls and boys to be community nurses and sanitarians at the Haile Selassie I Public Health College and Training Center in the ancient city of Gondar. It was a three-year odyssey that opened up a whole new world to her, one which she would come to share with the people of Albany, Georgia. Stella Davis, a native of Albany, collected objects that showed the artistic expression of the people in the countries to which she was assigned as a member of the United States Diplomatic Corps. Her last assignment was Ethiopia. While in Africa, she said, I found objects of unexpected quality in village markets and at festivals and ceremonies and in the day-to-day -day life of the people. These remarkable women donated their photographic records and collections of Ethiopian art to the Albany Museum of Art to bring into the light the heritage of what Bert called a generous sharing people. Ethiopia and its art are not familiar subjects in the Western world. Deriving its name from the Greek term meaning land of the burnt face people, it is a poor country where more than 80% of the population are engaged in mainly subsistence farming. Ethiopia is a land of extraordinary natural beauty. Located in the northeast corner of Africa just above the equator, it is a land of mountains and valleys, lakes, rivers and waterfalls. Its high plateaus and deserts both protected and isolated most of its population through the ages. Local traditions indicate the ancient capital of Aksum was founded by the descendants of Solomon and Sheba. Today, Ethiopia represents a rich mosaic of people who speak any one of 80 different languages. The towns, villages, and monasteries of Ethiopia are sanctuaries of ages past. This rich and diverse heritage is reflected in the art of its people. Ethiopia has a long and still flourishing tradition of painting, which is strongly influenced by Byzantine art. Also, skilled craftsmen provide objects of beauty and utility for every aspect of daily life. One of the strongest influences in Ethiopian art is Christianity, though traces of Jewish and Islamic faiths are also present. First coming to Ethiopia in the 4th century AD, Christianity unified the ethnically mixed and multilingual kingdom. Crosses play an important role in the life of Ethiopian Christians. In the 15th century, after turning back the tide of Islam, Emperor Zara Yaqub decreed that all Christians had to wear a neck cross, a custom still practiced today. Crosses may be of the equal armed Greek style or of the Roman style. Even the Star of David can be seen in some designs. Larger hand crosses carried by priests are presented to members of the community to be kissed as a gesture of devotion. They are made of iron, brass, silver, or wood. At the base is a rectangular plate that may have a prayer, blessing, or icon inscribed on its surface. Traditionally, silver and brass crosses were cast using the lost wax method. A wax model is made and covered in clay. The hot metal is poured into the clay mold, replacing the wax. Since the clay mold must be destroyed to retrieve the new metal object, each piece is unique. Since the 19th century, much of the metal that has been used to produce these crosses has come from melted silver Maria Theresa Toller coins from Austria that served as standard currency of Ethiopia until the first part of the 20th century. The burning of incense, drawing from both Hebrew and Christian practices, has always been an integral part of the worship service. Painting was introduced to Ethiopia by way of illustrated Bibles and other religious texts brought by Syrian, Armenian, and Egyptian missionaries when Christianity first arrived in the northern part of the country. The traditional painting style can be traced back to those illuminated manuscripts and has changed little since the Middle Ages. After this style of painting was introduced, it was adapted to reflect values unique to Ethiopia. For a short time in the 17th century, Roman Catholic missionaries asserted their influence around the ancient city of Gondar. Through new books and pictures, they brought new influences to the local art of illustration. The traditional style is characterized by simple, flat figures with pronounced wide eyes, outlined in black and filled with vibrant basic colors. 
By the 19th century, artists began to add more secular scenes to their repertoire. Each region of Ethiopia can lay claim to a distinctive form of jewelry based on materials used and their aesthetic value. In the central highlands, silver is preferred. However, brass, a less expensive metal, is also used. In the southern and western regions can be found ornaments and amulets of ivory. In the Islamic eastern provinces, silver and amber are used in tandem to produce beautiful jewelry. Ethiopian goldsmiths and silversmiths are renowned for their craftsmanship of their filigree and mounting twisted wires on flat strip metal. Ear picks produced by these smiths are often used as necklace pendants by women or worn like watch fobs at the waists of men. One of the more common scenes in the countryside is water being carried in huge thick-walled pots or gumbos. These ceramic vessels are made with three handles for securing the pots to the backs of the women who carry them. Red and black hand-built clay pots are still made in the traditional fashion, dating back well before recorded history. Coils of clay are stacked on top of each other, then allowed to dry. Once the pot is half dry, it is often rubbed with a mixture of red soil, water, and oil. It is then placed in the sun to bake. To strengthen the pots, they are commonly fired in an open kiln, fueled with wood, straw, leaves, and sometimes cow or donkey dung. This method does not always ensure that the clay is hardened thoroughly, so the pots tend to be short-lived. Occasionally, pottery is decorated with raised, incised, punched, or impressed patterns around the neck and shoulders. Craftsmen use ancient techniques to produce strong and functional furniture in a uniquely Ethiopian style. Typical are wooden headrests carved from local soft wood. They are designed to support the head just below the ear when a person is lying on one side. The Jima area in southwestern Ethiopia is known for its carved stools and chairs. An adze and a sharp knife are the basic tools used to create elaborate carvings. Each stool or chair is cut from a single piece of wood. The ancient kings of Jima ruled from such chairs. Basket making in Ethiopia is exclusively women's work. Baskets are used to store and serve food, such as injera, the Ethiopian staple flatbread. The most common baskets are woven, and though their shapes and designs have great beauty, they are functional as well as decorative. Baskets from the eastern region of Harar are renowned for their bright contrasting colors, so much a part of Harari life. These beautiful objects are regarded as the finest baskets in the country. They are made using the coil technique. A bundle of dried grass is wrapped with threads of grass or straw and bound together in a spiral to create a variety of basketry forms with geometric patterns woven into the coils. Spinning cotton and wool for cloth is still a common chore found in households across the country. Using a common pit loom, weavers can produce about five yards of cloth a day. The traditional dress for women in the highlands of Ethiopia is the kameez, a long, full-sleeved cotton gown that is often embroidered at the neck cuff and hem. The cotton cloth for the kameez is spun to a gossamer thinness. The designs that adorn the kameez are often distinctive to a particular area, such as the cross motif from the highland area. Over the kameez goes a shama, a light cotton shawl. The shama usually has a border that matches the trimming on the dress. The shama is gracefully draped over the head and shoulders. Like many African nations, Ethiopia is faced with the challenge of maintaining her rich and varied cultural heritage while becoming an active member of a global society. A past that is filled with rich tradition and beauty which is now coming to light. It is a universal light that shines from the creative spirit of its people.